Hi guys and welcome to another rambling and I had a little bit of a rough day and I actually didn't even want to do the rambling this week but I thought I really want to keep this a frequent thing so I, I just did get over myself because it would have been quite cheap because yeah I'm old enough to get along with that stuff. So the topics as always will be somewhere on the screen and I think I will be able to make this episode a little bit shorter because I just have four topics and I'm not quite sure how much I will have to talk about each one of them. So the first one is, let me quickly get that right. Here is what I wrote on my note. You can tell whichever re or you can tell which reviewer uses a device properly and who doesn't and the time he invested in reviewing it. And this is what I mean here. I see a lot of reviewers and especially if you follow them on their social channels, you see when they get their device and then you kind of along with that see how they actually re review it. Most of them pretty much always jump right ahead and check the camera. They use it for a few days and then you already see them working on their B-roll and all that. And once you see the full review, yes, it looks very cinematic. It looks really nice. But at least some of the ones that I have in my stream and I don't, I really don't want to bash any of them because... Everyone has its own style. Everyone has its own things that are important for him. Some of them are very much into photography. That's why they talk so much about the battery. I mean, the camera, maybe not so much about the performance or the build quality or anything on like the display. But for me, for example, battery life is very important. And I know, at least from all the comments and from what I see from people talking to me on my social channels that battery life is pretty much still the most important thing for everyone and that's why i have a heavy eye on that that's why i at least post five or six screenshots of my battery in my review talk a lot about them and i get it everyone has different use case scenarios everyone has a different mileage of battery but when i see a review that it could be as cinematic and as beautiful and as amazingly edited as it is but then i get something like that battery life was good it was good for about one day maybe a little bit more then my thought is and please this is no insult on anyone but my first reaction then is what what the fuck and just sorry for my little bit of a little bit of surprise because i didn't hear that the fans of my macbook are running not quite sure why because the only thing it does is display the pics actually these are the first viewer sent pics from me i got like from five people for now mostly are from one but it's cool to get some of them really really nice and i definitely want more you know the address but if not it will be down below but let's get back to the point when I see the battery that like it's good for about a day, maybe a little bit more, then I think just what what's that supposed to mean? You didn't give me any screen on time. You didn't say how long the day was. What did you do on that day? If you, for example, I have really light days when I do almost nothing. I reply maybe on three, four mails, check a little bit of a few brow uh, websites and so on, Twitter, and that's it. Maybe I have done like one and a half hours of screen on time. Of course, with that use, I, yeah, every phone would get me through a day and a little bit more. But then I have days with four or five hours of screen on time. So it really fluctuates. During my review, my personal review period, I gotta say I'm very down to something consistent. I always do pretty much the same stuff with then always pretty much the same apps. And at least I think that my better results in my your reviews you can always check them because there's always one battery section. And if one device gets like four hours from me, a screen all the time and the next one gets four and a half then it means that this one just has the better battery life and not that i used it differently because that's why i used it for at least five or six days just for the battery life because this is something where i'm not okay if i see someone puts out a review in one week and they spent like two days on the camera and three days on just shooting the b-roll there's not really much or too much room to actually spend on the review of the device because for what it looks like me I install all my apps and pretty much the first half day is just for the setup, then maybe one day more to get to know the device. And then I at least need about five straight days of also of work days, not just the weekend, to get a feel for the battery life. So I would say for me, a good review takes about seven days just for the device to know it yourself. What you put then in the time for the camera and for the editing, for the B-roll, 
that is up to you. But everything under a week or maybe let's say let, let's say five or six days, I can't really as great as the video is been short, take too much importance on it. And that's why I don't give anything of weight on that if I would have to choose on that for a for if I would like to buy this device. So I'm not so happy about that. That's it for that. But maybe I have different needs for my reviews, what I want to get from them. And a lot of people are okay with some more shallow reviews if they entertain them. I'm just not. I want the pure information. Let me know what you think of that. Okay, the next thing, making giveaways for subs and I mean subscribers, is that a good thing? And this is also one thing that I don't really, really want to bash in, but here's my opinion. I see a lot of reviewers, they don't really have too much views yet. I'm, I'm talking of too much in compared to something like 500,000 channels. I mean like maybe one, two million views overall. He has like 50, 60, let's say 100 videos. And his view count climbs quite fast and by the way the camera is up here because then I don't have it in the way if I look at it so I know I completely ramble and I always lose the path but I just wanted to mention that I hope the quality will be okay because it's facing downwards I hope it will be good because this is I'm okay with it being in the screen if it's not blocking any of the monitors because at least I can see my screen what I'm actually doing I'm doing good <laughs> no so and I see them making giveaways. And even though maybe they are like rising channels that go quite quite fast because I see channels getting like 20,000 subscribers in half a year. And always you see a spike whenever they do giveaways. I never really made a giveaway. I think I did once one for a few X, brand, uh, X gear skins. And that's what is it. Because I personally have the thinking that I want to get all my subscribers just with my content. But you can tell me whatever you want. If you get your subscribers and you do giveaways, you get like, let's say, 90% or let's say 80% of the subscribers because they want to win something. And most of them just stay subscribed to the channel because they know this channel do does a lot of subs, uh, giveaways and that's why they stick with it. And even though I know just 4.5% of my subscribers actually watch my content, I'm okay with that because all the subscribers, no matter how I got them, I got by convincing them with my content. And even though this number maybe is small of them who then actually watch the content, but at some point, all of those almost 9,000 I have now, at some point thought, yes, the content seems okay. Even though I don't watch everything, I just maybe I'm interested in laptop reviews, then I only watch the laptop reviews and don't watch 90% of the other videos. Or I just watch the smartphone reviews. Or A lot of people actually got back then to subscribe to my channel because of my custom room reviews. Of course, those maybe are still subscribed to my channel, but don't watch anything yet because I don't do them anymore. Mostly because I don't have a device to use with custom rooms. So I hope you get the point. I want to earn my subscribers. And I, I'm personally not in the, in the thinking of that it's okay by doing it by subscribers. At least I don't want it. I have no problem if people do that. And it's really nice that they do it because after all, some of the people actually win something, even though the chances, the bigger the channel gets are slower, uh, I mean smaller, because like if you have 100,000 subscribers and you give away one thing and the bigger the channel gets, the chances get smaller. But it's nice that some people can win something, but personally, maybe you thought, hey, I would like to get something to get from a giveaway from you, but... Sorry, I don't think I will do a lot of giveaways even in the future because I want to earn my subscribers. And if that means that I race slower or maybe not at all, I'm okay with that because at least I know I didn't get them by kind of paying for it. Let me know what you think. I'm, I'm quite sure everyone of the viewers from a viewer perspective knows to appreciate the giveaways and likes that that for. And I can't disargue or disagree with that, but personally, I don't really even participate on those giveaways because I know chances are that slim that I would win something, so I'm not even trying it. So, the next topic is, what's the one deal breaker for you and what's the one don't care feature? So what I mean is, if you had a device that is perfect in everything, has a perfect display, has a perfect sound, perfect feel in hand, and then the camera is crap if that would be a real break for you. And I want to know what this one feature is. So is it the camera? If everything of the rest is okay or great, 
Would that alone be enough for you to be a deal breaker, not to buy this device? Or would it be the display? Would it be the build quality? And then I want to know something that what's the one feature that you don't care at all for? So if a device is good in or okay in everything, oh no, I'm not quite sure where I wanted to go with that. And what's the don't care feature? So what's the one feature that the device could offer you that you don't care at all? So try to make of that whatever you want because Sometimes it's like a week ago or two weeks ago when I make this note and I'm not quite sure what I actually meant by that. Sorry for that. Okay, so the last topic for today is Snapdragon 615 is shit. The Snapdragon 410 is great and the 810 isn't that bad at all after all. So I actually wanted to make a single video just for that and calling it the worst SOC of 2015 and I wanted to answer or started with no it's not the 810 why because the 810 after all delivers a great performance it gets very hot unless the device actually gets to manage with that heat like for example the sonic Xperia z5 seems to do the nexus 6p seems to be able to and if you have a big enough battery also the not so efficient soc can be still managed because Overall, the experience, once you get to know the SoC and try to optimize it, it works because the performance is there. But my issue with the Snapdragon 615, which I still think is pretty much the worst, at least big mainstream SoC, is the 615. I've used it in three devices now that was, I think it was the Desire A20, the LG G4S or LG G4 Beat, LG Beat, and just right now in the Huawei G8. And here's the thing, it's not even that bad in terms of heat. It gets a little bit warm, but totally fine. Yes, I think it will throttle. I will have to test it once again on the Huawei. The battery efficiency on the first two devices I had wasn't great. I got about three, three and a half hours and on the, on the G4, just maybe two and a half to three hours. So it wasn't very efficient, but those devices also didn't have the biggest battery. The Huawei G8, I just have it for two days and I had only one single full cycle. But I got five and a half hours of screen time for that. Mostly on Wi-Fi, yes, okay, but still five and a half hours is impressive. So I'm not quite sure what, what that all, all was about. I, I don't get it. It feels almost like too good because, but then there's still the one thing that I have the issue with. Yes, it's maybe not the power efficient, most power efficient one, but the performance isn't good. And I would actually prefer in those devices to have, to have, and I really, I'm really sorry. I, I hope you don't hear the fans so much as I do. I think for some reason, maybe running three monitors is a bit too much for a MacBook Pro. Yes, Apple, it is. So the performance just isn't there. It is a very laggy device. It can be smooth in certain situations, but there are ex especially some apps like the old native browser or any app that renders his or her, its web pages with it is very laggy. Google Plus, very laggy. YouTube, and I will show this in my review. If you tap the screen while playing a video and it makes the overlay, the whole video slows down really noticeably. So this was noticeably on all three of those devices I reviewed so far. I heard similar things from the Moto X Play and I can't understand it because I would actually prefer a 410, a Snapdragon 410 in those devices because the 410 is way more efficient in terms of battery even though the 615, at least here on the Huawei, doesn't even seem that bad. But it performed very well, especially in a 2 gigabyte device like in the Samsung Galaxy A5. It delivered a really smooth, consistent performance. But with the 615, it's anything but consistent. It's even if good, not really smooth, not even on a Snapdragon 410. So I'm pretty much not, I'm not quite sure if it's a bad chip on its own or if it's just extremely poorly optimized. I think it's something of both because I didn't see it performing well on any device. So it can't be a great chip. Otherwise, any, 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 someone would have figured it out already. Yeah. Yeah. And optimization, I don't will fix it. I heard good things from the touch, I'll touch free Alcatel, but I still think the chip is shit. <laughs> okay, this video went already way too long. So, send me more pics. One small little update on project upgrade. 
I have pretty much all I need except of the i7-6700K because only a few shops have it here right now and they definitely want a lot more money because it was priced when it came out at around 300, 300, I mean 350, 370 euros. But since it's not available in these stores anymore, all the shops that still have some want at least five or 460, 470. And I'm not willing to pay that, so I will still have to wait, I think, maybe like two, three, maybe even four weeks to get one. Other than that, I would have everything. I still need to order my water cooling and the power supply, but I've already chosen them. The rest I've all set up. I could have it all running. Until that, I will still have to rely on that blowing whistle there. That usually is a really, really quiet MacBook, but I guess just running it with three monitors is just a little bit too much, even though actually it's just two, not four, two. <laughs> More, no, wrong here. Yeah. Thanks for that pick, actually. So, like I, like I said, send me more picks. Yeah, send me more feedback, send me more comments. And sorry for this quite rough because I, I rambled even more than I usually do, even though I'm not quite sure if that's actually possible. But I do this all for you. I hope you can appreciate it. At least I do appreciate all the likes. I do appreciate all the comments and I have to say it's really awesome that I get pretty much most of my comments these days from these rambling videos, not so much from my reviews because those reviews don't even get that many reviews because they are quite outdated devices. So I hope I will get over this hurdle a little bit in the coming months, but yeah, not so much I can do about it. But I really appreciate all the likes, the reshares, the comments especially, and your support. Keep it. Okay, until next time. Bye.